Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good morning, everyone. We have some breaking news that we definitely need to start a conversation about. We're just going to start the discussion in this breaking news update, kind of this breaking news alert. I'll give you the news. I well, we still got I have so many questions. I don't know if we have a lot of answers. We will be following this. We'll be following this story throughout the day. And as we get more information, we'll definitely I'll turn on the microphone and we will go live. So if you listen to us on the Church One app, have your notifications on and you can be notified whenever we discuss this subject today. But let's go ahead and get a proper introduction. It is Monday, December the 18th, 2023. It is currently 1015 a.m. Central Time, and I am coming to you live from the Theology Central Studio located right here in Abilene, Texas. Here is the breaking news I saw. I got a breaking news alert. I think it was about an hour ago on my iPad. I think is when I saw the first one. Then I think I've received already three emails in regards to it. So I know some of you are already very familiar with this breaking news. Some of you may not care. Some of you may think it's interesting. Everyone's going to have different reactions. But here is the headline. Pope Francis, right, the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, has authorized blessings for same-sex couples. Pope Francis has authorized blessings for same-sex couples, which many would say this is a definite shift in Catholic doctrine. Pope Francis has authorized blessings for same-sex couples. Let's walk through this. This comes to us from CNN.com. They updated this at 9.33 uh, a.m. Central Time is when they updated this. I don't know when the original story dropped, but they did an update at 9.33 a.m. All right, so here is what we know so far. Pope Francis, formally permitted... Formally, that's important, formally permitted, not formally, but formally, like in a formal way, all right? Everybody, I want to make sure we're, this is so clear, all right? Pope Francis formally permitted Roman Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples on Monday in a significant shift in Vatican doctrine. So in a formal way, Pope Francis now is permitting, right? In other words, you could say, well, maybe some were already doing so. Maybe some were already doing so and they weren't supposed to. Maybe there was discussion about it. Maybe there was debate about it. None of that matters because now in a formal way, Pope Francis has permitted Roman Catholic priests to bless same-sex couples on Monday and a significant shift in Vatican doctrine. The blessings may be carried out now, this is where this now, okay, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to try to offer some commentary as we work through this. As soon as I saw that he formally permitted Roman Catholic priests to bless same-sex uh, couples, I immediately had like a list of questions, right? Okay, so, okay, what does it mean about this? And what does it mean about this? And just so many questions. And to me, the more I, I've read this article once right before going on the air, and now that I'm reading it again live on the air, I immediately think it's very conf confusing. It, it seems almost like, wait, so exactly what does this mean, right? Because if you bless a same-sex union, are you telling them, okay, we bless you, now you can go live as a same-sex couple and engage in, well, sexual activity as a same-sex couple? Is that what it's saying? Are you just saying we're, we're giving a blessing to you, but you're still not supposed to engage in sexual activity? And is anyone going to really understand that? And if you're blessing them and they can go engage, engage in sexual activity, then why don't you then just bless, I mean, a, an adulterous relationship? I mean, just all the, just, I mean, at that point, when, when, then there's, you should just remove any restrictions on basically any sexual activity other than something that would be illegal. So what does the so what does the blessing signify? And are there restrictions to the blessing? Well, there seems to be some restrictions to the blessing, which only seems to me to make it more convoluted and confusing. So, first paragraph again. Pope Francis formally permitted formally permitted Roman 
yeah, the way I'm gonna I'm gonna state this again. Ro uh, Pope Francis has formally permitted Roman Catholic priests Roman Catholic priests to bless same sex couples on Monday in a significant shift in Vatican doctrine. The blessings may be carried out, providing now here's all the rules or some of the rules. They are not part of a regular church. They are not part of regular church rituals or liturgies, nor at the same time as a civil union, according to a Vatican document approved by the Pope. All right. So, hey, you can bless them, but it can't be a part of a regular church ritual, can't be a part of a church liturgy, and it cannot occur at the same time of a civil union. So exactly what does the blessing signify? What does the blessing signify? I don't really know what it signifies. Hey, hey, you can't, if you have a civil union, you can't get the blessing. Okay, so then are they still saying the civil union is wrong, but the blessing of the relationship is right? And we can bless you. We just can't do it during a, church, a regular church ritual or a liturgy. It seems very confusing to me. Like, are they, are they saying, well, look, 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 we're still maintaining, is, it, is this, to me, it all, I hate to say this. Now, this is speculation. This is not, what I'm about to say is not factual. It's not dogmatic. I have nothing to go by. It feels to me, it seems to me that it, it, it's almost like trying to make a distinction with no real difference. Hey, 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 we're blessing the same sex unions. Uh, the same sex relationship, but, 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 but we're, we're, we're not going to do it if there's a civil union. Oh, so, so look, we're, we're drawing a line in the sand. Hey, we're going to bless the same sex couples, but, 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 but it's not going to be during a regular church ritual or the liturgy. See, see, look, 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 we're still maintaining a standard. It seems more like, it seems like for a show, but let, let's continue. The latest ruling fleshes out the opening the Pope made to blessing same-sex couples last October and marks a shift away from a 2021 ruling from the Vatican Doctrine Office, which barred any blessings saying God cannot bless sin. So in 2021, God cannot bless sin. In December 2023, now you can. Now, if, now, if that is, if they used to refer to that as blessing sin, and now they can bless sin. Well, I'm sorry. Every other person should be raising their hand going, well, then bless my sin. Bless my lust. Bless my adultery. Bless my pornography. Bless my, bless everything. So what, ha so is, are you, so is the blessing now not blessing sin? Like what is the, what changed? I, I'd say these, I, I'm telling you, I've got so many questions here. I've got so many questions here. All right, let, let's, let's read a little bit further. But since July 2023, the doctrine department has been led by Cardinal Victor Manuel uh, Fernandez, an Argentine prelate and ally of Francis, who is stuck, who has stuck, they say stuck, I think it's supposed to be struck, who has stuck this is their words, a different tone. Would it be struck a different tone? The, a lot of the ways this article is written, I'm kind of like, I, I, I don't like even the first part, Pope Francis formally permitted to me, it, it was making like he formally, like in the past, but it was like, no, he in a formal way. All right. But all right. So in this case, he struck, I'm going to say struck a different tone. Don't you struck a different tone or do you stuck a different tone? All right. But I I'll guess I'll read it the way they've written it. Uh, uh, Francis, who has, or he was an ally of France, of Francis, who stuck a different tone to his predestor, uh, predecessors, pred pred yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, it stuck a different tone. All right. So, so he, so this individual, Cardinal Victor Emmanuel Fernandez, he comes along, he's an ally of Francis, and he is he is doing something different than his predecessors would have done. All right. So that that's I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna reword some of this, all right? When people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should be placed as a precondition for conferring it. That's an interesting quote. And that is in quotes. So let me give that quote again. When people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive 
moral analysis. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. I, I, I completely misread this. Okay, wait. This is interesting. When people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it. So, hey, they want a blessing. You don't need to do an, a moral analysis. You don't need, you just confer it. All right, so then what does the blessing signify? There's, so there's no moral analysis now that is a precondition. I don't need to ask any questions. I don't need to ask if they're, uh, so like how you, I mean, I, 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 do you, maybe it's just, it's just not an exhaustive one. You can do a, <laughs> A, a small moral analysis? I don't know. So when people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it. Um, the declaration authored by Cardinal Fernandez and another office official states, now, and I quote again, the grace of God works in the lives of those who do not claim to be righteous, but who acknowledges themselves humbly as sinners like everyone else. Okay. I, I, do, I do agree that God's grace does work in the lives of those who claim to be, uh, who don't, who do not claim to be righteous, but who acknowledge themselves humbly as sinners. I, I agree. So when you bless this same sex couple, is, are you saying the same sex couple is coming to you going, hey, we are not righteous. We are sinners, but we desperately need your blessing. Well, if they say we are sinners, then are they acknowledging that the same sex relationship is a sin? Or are they acknowledging that something else is a sin? That just seems confusing. All right. Next paragraph. The new ruling says it's opening the possibility of blessings for couples in irregular situations and for couples of the same sex. And now what is this? So what does blessings of couples in irregular situations mean? What is that referring to? Well, what, what do you mean you're blessing couples in an ir irregular situation? And so in addition to blessing couples who are in an irregular situation, <laughs> what does that mean? I don't, I don't know what that means. You're also now going to bless couples of the same sex. Although says, uh, although says it is leaving decisions to the prudent and fatherly discernment of ordained ministers. So ultimately each priest, I guess, will get to decide who are who they do not bless. See, it just seems so convoluted and confusing. James Martin, a Jesuit priest who ministers to gay Catholics, described the latest move as a major step forward in the church's ministry to LGBTQ people, writing on X that it recognizes the deep desire in many Catholic same-sex couples for God's presence in their loving relationships. So you're telling me the blessings confer God's presence upon, as this person is defining it, a loving relationship. Well, if that loving relationship involves a sexual component, then you are blessing same-sex sex and you're conferring what you believe to be God's presence to that. And my argument would be, then you need to bless people engaged in a, a, a fornication, premarital sex relationship, or adultery, or we, we could add all kinds of other polygamy. I mean, where, where do you stop? You can't, you can't turn around and bless one and ignore everyone else's because everyone else has sin. Everyone else has some kind of sin of some sort, whether lust, pornography, you just, I mean, sexual sins are numerous. They are a legion for there are many, but we're, we're going to take this one. We're going to bless this one, but, but Hey, they're also going to bless couples who are in irregular situations. I don't know what those irregular situations are, but that to me, at least that, that priest seems to make it sound like, Hey, we're going to bless this same-sex couple because we want them to, they want to, uh, they desire God's presence 
And then they describe it, this priest at least describes it as a loving relationship. Now, please note, that's a priest. That's not the Pope calling it that. But he are, are obviously sees this as, hey, this is a good thing. The Pope's attempts to shift the church's approach to LGBTQ Catholics began in 2013, when in a reply to a reporter's question about gay clergy, he said, who am I to judge? Well, I mean, you're kind of the Pope, but okay, all right. Uh, he goes on to say, Francis has indicated his support for the civil recognition of same-sex couples and has sought to move the Vatican away from some of the harsh language it has used in the past about gay people. Now, so, so this blessing is not a civil recognition, but it's a blessing. I need to know exactly what the blessing, what the blessing does. The Pope has also offered his support to a nun uh, from the United States who has ministered to gay Catholics for years. She had previously been censored by the Vatican, but recently met with Francis, who described her as a valiant woman. While the Pope has not changed the church's opposition to gay marriage, nor has he changed Catholic sexual teachings. He has sought to emphasize a pastoral and sensitive approach, which is having a significant impact on LGBTQ Catholics. This is a developing story and will be updated. Now, it is a developing story. I don't know how I reconcile that last paragraph. Hey, He's going to, he's authorizing, he's formally authorizing now, uh, formally permitting priests to bless same-sex couples. However, he's not changing the church's opposition to gay marriage. And supposedly, he's not changing Catholic sexual teaching. I... But uh, we already have the quote from one priest who's saying, hey, oh, this, these couples desire God's presence in their loving relationship. So are you saying that these same-sex couples are abstaining from sexual relations and that's a prerequisite for the blessing? But the previous quote that I misquoted, which I'm glad I did now because now we get to over, I get to overemphasize it, the blessing may be carried out providing they are, uh, are, are see, okay, well, they're so not a part of rituals. Okay, hang on, where's the other part? When people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it. That seems to me to indicate, hey, same-sex couple shows up, we want to be blessed. Okay, we'll bless you. We don't have to ask any questions. We don't have to ask you if you're, if you're sexually involved, with nothing. We don't have to ask anything. I guess maybe you ask if there's a civil union. If there's a civil union, then you can't bless them. Because I guess that would be blessing the civil union, which they're supposedly still opposed. But if you're but if you're opposed to the civil union, but you're still blessing the relationship, it seems so contradictory. Hey, I can bless your relationship, but you cannot get married. You cannot have a civil union. But hey, well, we'll bless your relationship. Then what is the blessing? What exactly is it doing? What is it saying? Is the blessing saying this is a good relationship? Is the blessing saying this is a right relationship? Well, then if it's a good and right relationship, then why can't you not then have a civil union? To me, this is just, I think this just unlocked the door and the rest is coming. The rest is going to follow. So we're, we're going to have to get some some more. Again, I, 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 I apologize that this, you know, I don't have more answers but this all just happened you know, just a little while ago, and I'm still trying to process it all. But I wanted to at least bring this to your attention. Now, if you've got Catholics, if you've got Catholic friends, families, coworkers, people you have a good relationship with, maybe that you've been trying to share the gospel with and you've been trying to, to show them some flaws in Catholic doctrine— I would you I would be ready. I, w- I would just let them process it first. Don't just immediately and then then if they're very conservative, if they're very conservative, then at the appropriate time and right setting, depending on your relationship with him, you could, then I would start asking some tough questions. So what exactly does this mean? 
Let them struggle with it. Because I think there's going to be some very conservative Catholics today who are going to be like, wait, what is happening? Because this to me is a, I just don't know how you can bless them. There's no, again, where's that statement? There is not, uh, when bless, when people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it. So that you don't have to ask any questions. So if you're blessing the, the relationship, if it's if you're blessing the couple, are you blessing the relationship or are you just blessing, blessing the individuals within the relationship? But to the fact, well, then it, an individual could come for a blessing. The fact they're coming as a couple to be blessed as a couple, you're blessing that relationship. And if you're blessing the relationship, how then can you say, no, you can't do this or you can't do this or you can't do that? I guess you could, but then what, what are the restrictions? Are you going to, does the blessing come with a restriction? Hey, I'll bless you. However, you cannot engage in sexual intimacy. But if you're not going to place that, I don't know then why you don't just bless everyone. I, I have questions. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm going to look at something. I'm going to look at something here because I'm confused by how this article is written here. I'm going to look at something really quick. Yes. I'm going to look here. Yeah, I'm looking at the, 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 the way the article was written because there's that one sentence that it says he stuck a different tone. I think that's struck a different tone. I, maybe it is stuck a different tone. It's got to be struck a different tone uh, to his predecessors. So, all right. Some of the things in the article, the way it's written, I'm, I'm like, uh, what's going on here? Then maybe just some, maybe it's me, but there you, there you go. Trying to just walk through it and live and, and real time, trying to process everything going on there. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where this is going to go. We're going to wait as the day progresses. I'll be checking every Catholic podcast and Catholic news site that I follow. And as we get like some official reactions to this. Well, I know we're going to get some clarifications. I know that. I know there's going to be there's going to be many who are going to like, whoa, 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 everyone calm down. It doesn't mean they're going to say it doesn't mean this. 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 So, hey, calm down. It only means this. And they're going to try to reassure that that's this is my prediction. There's going to they're going to give us a list of all the things it doesn't mean. They're going to make it a very small list of what it does mean. I think it's going to be relatively vague. And they're going to tell you there's nothing to see here. Don't worry about it. The official teaching of the Catholic Church is still, it has not been changed. So that everything is okay. I don't know how you can't, I don't know how you can't see. This has got to be a step. Now, maybe the next Pope will come along and do away with this. I don't know. But it's definitely a step in a a direction away from. I, I just don't know how you can. I, I don't know what the blessing means. That, that's what I, I need a clear definition. And I, I've got my Catholic catechism right here. I, I'll do some research. I don't want to do the research here in real time because you know you would just be sitting here listening to me turn pages in a book. But. Um, I've got two Catholic catechisms right here. So I will, I'm going to do a little work to see exactly what it confers on these individuals. If it doesn't confer what a typical blessing does. For example, if you, if you go to mass and you're not a Catholic, when they're taking the Eucharist, you can walk up to the altar, to the priest, and you can put, you can put your hands like almost like as an X on your chest and they will give you a blessing. They will, you can't partake of the, of, the Eucharist, because you're not a, a confirmed Catholic, right? A baptized, confirmed Catholic. So you can do that and they will bless you. Well, what does that blessing convey? What does it confer upon you? There's other ways to receive blessings, okay? What does that mean? We don't want to make it mean more than it does, but obviously they believe it's significant enough that in 2021, let me find that quote again in the article. In 2021, where is it? I think it was 2021. Let me look at the date. 
All right. Um, in 2021, a ruling from the Vatican Doctrine Office barred any blessings on same-sex couples saying God cannot bless sin. 2023, December the 18th, now you can. So there was a time they viewed the blessing of a same-sex couple as blessing the sin. Now they're saying it's not blessing the sin. So what changed between 2021 and 2023? There's going to have to be a clarification. Now, I'm, I'm assuming the Pope, when he formally permitted Roman Catholic priests to do this t- today, or you know, today, I guess, I, there, I'm assuming there's going to come a, doct- a document with it. And uh, once we find that document, typically it'll be published on the Vatican website. So once we, we get that, we'll, we'll see. So we'll keep you up to date on this. I don't know. I think there's going to be some very conservative Catholics are going to have some very difficult times with this. Very difficult times with this. Which then they're going to, I don't know. Do we get a schism in the Catholic Church? Do you think we can? Do, I don't know. Typically that doesn't work that way because of their structure. Are we going to get a massive schism here? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe maybe this will be much to do about nothing and I'm making it a big We'll put it this way. All the news sites are making it a big deal, right? All the all the all the news sites are making it a big deal. Uh, hang on, let me look here. I'm going to go to my email inbox. Let me go my email inbox here. Do a refresh. See if I've gotten any more uh emails in regards to this. Hang on. I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't know if I have any more. Don't think I do. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, I don't think I have any more currently. Yeah, I've got a lot of emails, so I I don't think I see. I'm probably missing a couple of them. And let me hear... Okay, well, all right, all right, I already found, hang on. Okay, immediately, remember that line? Okay, so I'm, this is just interesting because already that line, I said requests should not be subject to moral analysis. Remember, I really emphasized that. Well, uh, right now I've, I'm looking at some different news sites and that's one of the headline. Request should not be subject to moral analysis. They really are emphasizing that part. Uh, this is from the Associated Press. Pope approves blessings for same-sex couples if they don't resemble marriage. What does that even mean? I don't even know what that means. Pope Francis has formally approved. All right, see, see that 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 makes sense. The 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 CNN article made it sound like he had formally approved, like he did it in the past. Formally, he approved them in the past. This one reads much clearer. Pope Francis has formally approved allowing priests to bless same-sex couples with a new document. I knew there was going to be a document explaining a radical change in Vatican policy by insisting that people seeking God's love and mercy shouldn't be be subject to an exhaustive moral analysis to receive it. So, He's viewing it that people who want this blessing are seeking God's love, and therefore there should be no exhaustive moral analysis to it. But what is this idea that if they don't resemble marriage? All right, let, let's go ahead and read this. The document from the Vatican's doctrine office released Monday elaborates on, uh, on a letter Francis sent to two conservative cardinals that was published in October. In that pre- preliminary response, Francis suggested such blessings could be offered under some circumstances if they don't confuse the ritual with the sacrament of marriage. Hey, we can't marry you, but we can bless you. Again, it's so confusing. Now, this do- new document repeats that condition, re- repeats that condition. So, hey, it's not marriage and elaborates on it, reaffirming that marriage is a lifelong sacrament between a man and a woman, and it stresses that blessings and questions must be non-liturgical in nature and should not be conferred at the same time as a civil union, using set rituals or even with the clothing and gestures that belong in a wedding. So make sure it doesn't look like a wedding. Don't do anything that you anyone would think it's a wedding, but you can still bless them. 
But it says requests for such blessings for same-sex couples should not be denied full stop. It offers extensive and broad definition of the term blessing and scripture to insist that people seeking a transcendent relationship with God and looking for his love and mercy should not be subject to an exhaustive moral analysis as a precondition for receiving it. Ultimately, a blessing offers people a means to increase their trust in God, the document said. So I guess what they're saying is, hey, these people are getting blessed and it's only, it's there to increase their trust in God. It's to help them trust in God more. Is that, is that all it does? The document said the request for a blessing thus expresses a nurture, it expresses and nurtures an openness to the transcendence, mercy and closeness to God and a thousand uh, concrete circumstances of life, which is no small thing in the world in which we live. So the request for a blessing expresses and nurtures openness to the transcendence, mercy and closeness to God and a thousand concrete cir- circumstances of life, which is no small thing. He added, it is a seed of the Holy Spirit that must be nurtured, not hindered. So the desire for the blessing, I guess, is a seed and you should not hinder that. You should nurture it. So by conferring the blessing, then supposedly, I guess the logic is, then that will nurture an openness to the transcendent. I don't know. The document marks the latest gesture of outreach from a pope who has made welcoming LGBTQ Catholics a hallmark of his papacy from his 2013 quip, who am I to judge, about a purported gay priest to his 2023 comment to the associated priest, being homosexual is not a crime. Francis has distinguished himself from all his predecessors with his message of welcome. Now look, if you want to welcome and if you want to be open to it, I mean, obviously you can do whatever you want. But my issue is then you've got to be as welcoming and as open to every other sin. Now, you can't just be welcoming and opening to one sin. You got to be welcoming and opening to every sin. So it, it's, it's like that, that's just the thing that has to be considered. The significance of this news cannot be overstated said Francis D. Bernardo of New Ways Ministry, which supports LGBTQ plus Catholics. So there, see, I, so it's not just me. Others are saying this cannot be overstated. It is one thing to formally approve same gender blessings, which has, ha, he had already pastorally permitted, but to say that people should not be subject to an exhaustive moral analysis to receive God's love and mercy is an even more significant step. The Vatican holds that marriage is an indissoluble union between man and woman as a result as it has long opposed same-sex marriage. And in 2021, the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith and... uh, said flat out that the church could not bless the unions of two men or two women because God cannot bless sin. That document created created an outcry, one it appeared even Francis was blindsided by, even though he had technically approved its publication. Soon after it was published, he removed the the official responsible for it and set about laying the groundwork for a reversal. So in 2021, when I guess that was said, then he came along and was all immediately started trying to reverse it even then. In the new document, the Vatican said that the church must shy away from doctrinal or disciplinary schemes, especially when they lead to a narcissistic and authoritarian elitism, whereby instead of evangelizing, uh, one analyzes and classifies others. Instead of opening the door to grace, one exhausts his or her energies and in inspecting and verifying. So it just seems like, hey, we're not going to ask any questions. We're not going to inspect. We're not going to verify. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to bless because the blessing somehow is evangelism, I guess, in their mind. Um, It stressed that people in irregular unions of extramarital sex, gay or straight, are in a state of sin, but that, but it should, but it said that it shouldn't deprive them of God's love or mercy. So wait a minute. So the irregular refers to extramarital sex. So that would be adulterous relationships. So that means 
Pope Francis has authorized the blessing of of unions of extramarital sex and gay couples or same-sex couples. That seems to be what I'm reading. That Pope Francis has now authorized the blessing of unions of extramarital sex, whether gay or straight. Now they're in a state of sin, but you can still bless them. Even when a person's relationship with God is clouded by sin, he can always ask for a blessing searching out his hand to God, the document said. Now I understand like... uh, it, it, it's this really weird, convoluted language. Hey, you! these people should be able to get a blessing. But I, what is being blessed? Is the relationship being blessed? Is the extramarital sex being blessed? So well, I, I don't like, it's so weird. Like you're blessing in 2021. Someone understood it that you're blessing the sin. And he seen, and Pope Francis seems to be saying, well, no, 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 we're not really. They're still in sin, but they get a blessing. So what's being blessed? I mean, when you come there as a same-sex couple and we want to be blessed, you seem to be flaunting the fact we are a same-sex couple, seemingly implying that we're intimate and now we want a blessing. But, But no, 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 no. You're still in sin, but you get the blessing. So does the blessing cover the sin? I, I, I don't know exactly what any of this means. It seems so re, like, I need a little bit more clarity is what I need. Offering such a blessing isn't legitimizing anything. But at the same time, the church shouldn't judge. So it's not legitimizing it, but it's not judging it. So what is it doing? Is the, is the new policy is kind of like one of apathy? Hey, we, we just, we, we don't care. We don't care. We don't care. I, I, I don't really know what exactly... This supposedly means, thus, when people ask for a blessing, an exhaustive moral analysis should not be placed as a precondition for conferring it, the document said. Remember, we talked about that in the last article we read. The Reverend James Martin, who advocates, okay, well, that's uh, the person that we quoted to earlier. Um, This one says, the new document recognizes the deep desires in many Catholic same-sex couples for God's presence and help in their committed relationships. So again, it keeps talking about these relationships as committed, as as loving, as good. Well, I, I don't. How do we understand that? So then, this person that we've already talked about before, a Jesuit priest, said, along with many Catholic priests, I will now be delighted to bless my friends in same-sex marriages. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, 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 no! You can't bless them in a same-sex marriage. Yeah, I yeah, this is a mess. Traditionalists, however, were outraged. The traditionalist and uh, one wrote that the document appeared to be a form of heresy. The church is crumbling, according to one individual, and that ends the Associated Press article, which is far it's written better than the CNN article, at least in my mind. Right, and maybe there was some. Maybe CNN used the right tense that there's something had been done in the past, but it seems like whatever was done in the past, it was formally done. So it was really weird. And then again, struck, stuck. You struck the chord. I, I, yeah. So I, I think struck was the, the right word. So, um, but the Associated Press av- avoids all of those kinds of errors. And uh, I'm just confused. So now you can, so it's so to maybe the big takeaway from this, maybe we just stumbled upon it in real time. Hey, this is what, this is what happens when you're doing a real time analysis that it's not just a blessing of same sex couples, you're blessing couples. And I'm going to go to the exact quote here because this is the one that really jumped out at me. All right. Let me find it. Uh, you see here, because this is, this was interesting. All right, all right. So you supposedly are not a blessing sin. All right, let me see here. We can find this. Okay, let's look for. Okay, it's stressed. 
the, the document. We, we need to get our hands on the documents, what we need. They don't give the name of the document here, which is, and they don't have a link to the document. God, uh, journalists sometimes drive me crazy. If, if, you're gonna, if you're referring to a document, give me the name of the document, a link to the document so that we can read the document for ourselves. All right, here we go. If I, if I get the document, I will be posting a link to it at theologycentral.net in the blog section. But here we go. So then listen, this is to me the big takeaway. It's stressed that people in irregular unions of extramarital sex, gay or straight, that seems to imply we know they're engaged in sexual activity. They are in a state of sin, but it, but it said that that shouldn't deprive them of God's love or mercy. So in other words, you can be an ex, an engaged in extramarital sex, whether straight or gay, and the church will bless you. Now, what are you blessing? That's what I don't understand. Are you blessing the relationship? Are you blessing? If you're blessing the individuals, then why come as a couple? I, I don't know. But there, there's the breaking news. There, I don't have a lot of answers right now. Those are CNN, the Associated Press are the two that I have now. I'm going to start looking at Catholic sites. And as I get Catholic reaction to this, obviously, it seems that at least one, some of the traditionalists are already referring to it as complete heresy. That's what I'm talking about. The more conservative Catholics are not going to be happy about this. Now, I'm not saying it's going to rise to a level of a schism. I think there's going to be a lot of people questioning their Catholicism today. I could be wrong. But I, so if, if you've got very conservative Catholic family or friends, this is a good day to talk to them and just to let them talk, get their feedback on this. What are they saying? Your more liberal Catholic friends are going to be like this. They may be saying this is a great day. But you may want to point out that it's not just same sex couples. It's anyone involved in extramarital sex. Let me read it again. The exact phrase, because again, I'm still just baffled by this. Um, let me find it again. It's stressed that people in irregular unions of extramarital sex, gay or straight, are in a state of sin, but it said they shouldn't deprive them of God's love or mercy. So therefore, they get the blessing. Hey, you're in sin. You're in clear, blatant, open sin, but we bless you. I want to hear the words of the blessing, right? What are the words of the blessing? Is it just, I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Oh, well, uh, okay, good question. Someone says, shouldn't a good Catholic just fall in line? I mean, he is infallible. He's only infallible when declaring certain things at a certain time. There are certain rules when the infallibility is work. But since this is a document, does it reach the, 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 the seal of infallibility? That, that's a good question. A good Catholic, uh, uh, put it this way, theoretically, a good Catholic should fall in line. Theoretically, they should. They should. They should. Well, we'll see how this plays out. Theoretically, they should. They should. But I, I'm, I'm going to be... Uh, It'll be interesting to see how the subject of infallibility plays in with this document because it's a, it's a, an official document released. So this would be official church teaching by the Pope himself. So I think it would have to fall under that to some level. Definitely has magisterial authority. So it definitely uh, raises some questions. But there's the latest. Um, I'm sorry I went 43 minutes and... There we go. Thank you for your patience and allowing me to stumble through all of that. But I was I was literally looking at things in real time with you. And uh, yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll, we'll follow this the rest of the day. And I guarantee you, I, I think you're going to probably hear a lot about this today. We're going to end 2023 with some theological controversy. There's going to be much said about this today. I have a feeling that uh, there's going to be plenty of podcast episodes in the theological world and in the Catholic world about this decision and this document. So, we, but do this. I would challenge you. Whenever I find the document, I'll, I'll let you know. But when we find the document, read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Remember, 
yesterday when we talked about uh, Prestonwood, I think it's Prestonwood uh, Baptist Church here in Texas and their absolutely ridiculous Christmas show. Remember how the news media reported it? They're, they referred to it as their Christmas mass. <laughs> it's a Baptist church. They don't have a mass. That's a Catholic church. So sometimes when secular uh, news media is reporting on theological things, they don't utilize the right terminology. They don't really express things in a correct way because no knowledgeable person of theology would refer to a Baptist Christmas pageant as a mass. Okay. That's ridiculous. All right. Uh, so that, but that, that, that just was an example of yesterday. And even that CNN article, the way it was written, I was like, wait, so are you seeing it already happen? You're saying it formally, like in a formal way. And then the tense they were using and then the stuck versus struck there, there was just some, there was some things Now I'm not picking on them because, you know, I, I have my own problems grammatically and punctu- and, and my own uh, problems and saying things correctly. Don't even, let's not even talk about my, you know, yeah, my writing. I don't think I even use punctuation. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can get, we can get into all kinds of uh, of things there. So, but at the same time, when you're trying to read it live on the air in real time, you're kind of like, wait, what, what, wait, what are you saying there? So, but I didn't see, at least they, they didn't do, they didn't refer to a Baptist, <laughs> a Baptist, I don't know what you call it, a Baptist Christmas show that, as a mass. At least they didn't do that. So, but there you have it. We We will continue to follow this. And as we get more updates, we'll bring them to you. You can always email me any of your thoughts or any information you find at newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. Thank you for tuning into this breaking news. And we will uh, follow it throughout the day. And I'll report back to you when I can. Everyone have a great day. God bless.